Here is another uh, collision question involving angles. And for this problem, we have a 5 kilogram object traveling at 1.6 meters per second. And then it collides with another object with unknown mass. Uh, however, that object is traveling at 2.5 meters per second. The two objects then stick together and move towards the right as shown in the diagram below. Okay, so let's take a look at this diagram. And uh, I guess we have a before case here. And after the two objects collide, we have an after case. If I look at the very first object, which I'm highlighting in blue here, uh, it has a mass of 5 kilograms and its speed is 1.6 meters per second. It's moving in this downwards direction and we have this angle of 28 degrees. Then we have the second object, which is moving at 2.5 meters per second. We don't know the mass. So the purpose of this question is to find the mass of this second object here. And at the beginning, um, the second object is moving in this direction here, uh, I guess kind of in that top area there, and its angle is 21 degrees. And I guess once the two, uh, as mentioned, as once the two objects collide together, it's moving to the right. Okay, now that we've kind of uh, talked about the general uh, numbers in this problem, let's go ahead and construct a uh, vector diagram. So a vector diagram is very useful when you have these collision problems with angles. So my very first vector that I want to look at is this vector right here in blue. It's kind of going that downwards direction. And then I have this uh, green vector right here, which is kind of going that upwards direction. And then once these two objects collide, uh, they move together and they move to the right like this. So based on those uh, three colors, we want to create a vector diagram. Okay, so let me kind of start off with this very first vector in blue. So if I just go um, down here, I will now just try to construct a uh, vector diagram here. So here is the first vector, and I'll label this as P1. So P1 kind of meaning the uh, momentum for the first vector. And then uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this second vector here in green. All right, so I will construct a... Uh, Another diagram for that, a vector diagram for that, so something like this. And I'll label this as P2. And then finally we have our third vector uh, over here in the right, so uh, we just need to draw a vector connecting um, the first two vectors here. So this is basically your resultant vector, so here's my resultant vector like that, and I'll label that as P3 with a hat. Okay, so the concept that I'm trying to uh, uh, talk about here is uh, momentum being conserved. So that means the momentum at the beginning equals to the momentum at the very end. So before and after, the, the momentum should be equal. Now, since we're dealing with vectors, at the beginning, I have my first vector, P1, and then I have my second momentum vector. I'll label that as P2 with a hat, and that's going to equal to my third momentum vector which is really the resultant, right? I'm just adding this, uh, adding the vectors from head to tail right there. So uh, this is my uh, vector diagram being translated into, um, into, uh, into some just um, proper momentum notation, which um, is connecting the idea of the momentums being conserved. Okay, uh, after that, let's go ahead and find the magnitude of this first momentum vector, P1. And in order to do that, let's just go back to the original problem here. And let me kind of erase all this. So if I take a look at this object right here, the mass was five kilograms and speed was 1.6. All right, so if I want to find its momentum, I write out momentum is mass times speed. And the mass is going to be five and the speed is going to be 1.6. If I multiply those two numbers together, I get eight. And the units are kilograms times meters per second. Okay, and uh, we also know that uh, it's going off at this angle of 28 degrees, right? So that 28 degrees is kind of like below this horizontal, and uh, it's also kind of above this, uh, or just below uh, that vector there. So the 28 degrees is between the red and pink colors. Okay, so if I now go to my vector diagram here, let me erase this P1 vector here, and we'll replace that with the number eight. Right, and uh, what we're also trying to say is the horizontal was kind of like here, and we also had like that uh, the pink vector down here. So, what we're trying to say here is that the 28 degrees is actually right here in the diagram 28 degrees. And then, if we use the concept of alternate interior angles, that 28 degrees actually translates into this upper corner in the triangle. All right, so that's what we want we want the 28 degrees inside the triangle there, and that's where it would lie. 
Okay, um, and then after that, let's uh, take a look at the diagram one more time here and let's figure out where do I put this 21 degrees? Well, the 21 degrees is below that red line but above this orange line. So we need to kind of figure out wh um, where that 21 degrees would be in our vector diagram. So here's the orange line and here's the, the red line. So uh, the 21 degrees is actually right here in the triangle, 21 degrees like that. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now that we have the two angles there, we can definitely uh, go ahead and find the third angle if we wanted to, but uh, we do have enough information here to um, um, start breaking down this particular problem here. So um, what we're gonna do here is let's go ahead and see if we can find the magnitude of the second momentum vector. And we can use this, uh, we can figure that out by using the sine law. Okay, so uh, according to the sine law, if you have an angle such as 21 degrees, and if you have its opposite side, then you can use the sine law. So how that works is you write down sine, and the angle here is 21 degrees, and we're gonna divide that by the opposite side, which is equal to eight. And then we're gonna make that equal to then we have another angle here, 28 degrees. So I'll, I'll write that as sine of 28 degrees. And we always divide it by the opposite side, in this case, which is just P2. Okay, we wanna find the magnitude of P2 there. Okay, so our goal now is to solve for this variable, or you know P2, the momentum of the second vector there. And uh, what we can do here is I can just um, interchange these two. Okay, so P2 goes to the top there equals to, uh, this will be a sine of 28. And then we divide this by the sine of 21 degrees. And then we take, um, after that, let me get a blue, a red marker here, we take this eight and we just kind of move it to this side, so we just times that by eight. And that's how you can solve for P2 by just uh, manipulating the, the sine law formula there. So now we have sine of um, 28 times eight divided by sine of 21 and um, if you go to your calculator here and crunch out the numbers here, uh, we do get a value of 10.48. And that's the momentum of P2. Okay, so if I go back to my diagram now, let me kind of erase all this. And what, what we just kind of figured out here was P2, this value right here is 10.48. Okay. All right, so uh, the question was find the mass of object number two, right? Well, object number two has a momentum of 10.48. So what we're gonna do now to kind of finish this problem off is we know that momentum equals to mass times the speed. We know the momentum of object of the second object was 10.48. The mass we don't know, but the speed we do know um, the second object is going at 2.5 meters per second. Okay, so then we just change this to a 2.5. And now we can solve for the mass. The mass is gonna be uh, 10.48 divided by 2.5. And then uh, if we do that, we get uh, 4.19 kilograms for the mass of M2. Okay, let me just go back to my original diagram here and uh, let me just kind of erase all this now. And uh, we just figured out that the mass two is equal to 4.19 kilograms. So this mass right here is uh, 4.19 kilograms. Okay, so that is the solution for that particular problem. Here is another uh, collision question that uh, kind of involves a different concepts. And uh, although, there, although there's no angles, is a very good uh, thinking question to work on. So for this problem, we have a 360 kilogram roller coaster which is right here, and it's traveling at 18 meters per second, and it collides inelastically with a stationary 240 kilogram car on a horizontal track as shown in the diagram. And we wanna figure out to what maximum height do the combined cars travel before rolling back down the hill, and we assume there's no friction. Okay, so this is a very good uh, combo question. Uh, it involves the conservation of momentum concept, and we also need the work energy theorem concept as well. Okay, so let me kind of erase some of the colors here, and let me kind of start labeling the diagram um, in a way where, uh, let's just pretend that we are starting at position A in this problem, and we wanna kind of finish off at position B. So um, when we're going from A to B, what I'm just trying to say from A to B is, I'm just trying to say that the, mo the momentum at A is equal to the momentum at position B. 
All right, so this is the concept of conservation momentum. So the momentum is conserved. So at the beginning, we have two objects. We have um, we have this roller coaster, and we also have this stationary car, right? So uh, since we're dealing with two objects, those two objects both have momentum. So momentum is mass times speed plus mass times speed. And then when we get to position B here, the two uh, the two carts they are now kind of clumped together. So the momentum at at uh, this particular region right here is going to be the combined masses which is the first mass plus the second mass and they're both going to have a speed as well at position B. Okay so this is using the conservation of momentum principle. Okay let's figure this out. So this mass right here the mass of the roller coaster well it has a mass of 360 kilograms and we know that speed is 18 meters per second. Okay now the stationary car the stationary car has a mass of 240 kilograms, but it's not moving. All right, so this mass will be 240 times zero. So that is the momentum at the beginning of the problem. Now, as we as the two cars lock together, um, they will move to position B, this region right here, and we'll have momentum at position B as well. At that position, we combine the two momentums, which is 360 plus 240, and we multiply by a speed. So now we can find the speed at position B. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what this is gonna be. Uh, if I multiply 360 by 18, I get uh, 6,480, and then I just add uh, you know, 240 times zero is just zero, and then if I add the two masses here together, 360 plus 240, we get a combined mass of 600 kilograms times the speed. Okay, so now I have 600, times the speed equals to uh, 6,480. Okay, I can now um, isolate for the, the, the speed variable by dividing both sides by 600. So I have 600, 480 divided by 600. And uh, the speed that I get here now is gonna be 10.8 meters per second, okay. So uh, now that we have the 10.8 meters per second, let's go back to the original diagram and let's figure out what that 10.8 meters per second, what that means. Okay, so let me just erase this. Now let's kind of uh, relabel the diagram here. So uh, let's just call this position B and let's call this uh, position C. All right, now we're, when we're going from position B to C, uh, we're gonna use the work energy concept. So the work energy concept states that the energy at the beginning, which is now at position B, is equal to the energy at position C. Now when we're using the work energy theorem here, we need to consider the kinetic energy at the beginning plus the potential energy at the beginning. There's always some work minus some uh, energy due to friction, and then that's gonna equal to the kinetic energy at the end plus the potential energy at the very end. So that right there is the work energy theorem concept there. Now let's go ahead and modify this because we are told that there is no friction and this question also doesn't mention anything about work, right? So right away we can eliminate work and we can eliminate the heat because um, the heat is energy due to friction. Also when we're at position B right here, the two carts are at the bottom, the bottom of the hill, right? So when you're at the bottom of the hill, there is no potential energy, okay? And another concept that we need to understand is that um, once we get to a maximum height, this is just like projectile theory, once you get to a maximum height, once you're at a maximum height, your final speed is gonna be equal to zero. So when you're at the maximum height here, the final speed here equals to zero and then you fall back down. So what that means is if there's no speed at the top, that means there's no kinetic energy at the very end. Okay, so given all of that, um, using the work energy theorem concept, it turns out that we need to consider the kinetic energy at the beginning and as well as the potential energy at the very end. Okay, so since uh, the masses are combined, let's go ahead and write the uh, formula for kinetic energy is one half um, mass times it's really the mass, so I'll say m1 plus m2 times by the speed squared, and that's gonna to equal to the combined mass, mgh, so mass one plus mass two times the acceleration due to gravity times the maximum height. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in the numbers now. We have one half 
and the combined mass is really uh, 360 plus uh, 240, that's the combined mass. And what is the speed at position B? Well, we just figured that out, right? The, the speed at position B is 10.8 meters per second. Okay, so uh, we, then we go over here and we times this by 10.8 and then square that. Okay, and then the combined mass is once again uh, on the potential energy side is 360 plus 240. And close those brackets. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.80. And then we want to find the maximum height here. All right, so what is the maximum height achieved in this problem? Okay, after this, we're off to the, the calculator now, and then we can probably figure out what the, uh, the height has to be here. Now, on the left-hand side of this equation, if you put this all into a calculator, uh, your kinetic energy will be 34,000. 992 joules and then uh, if we just calculate this number here on the the right hand side so 360 plus 240 and we times that by the acceleration due to gravity uh, we should get um, 5880 and then we multiply that by the height okay so in order to find the height uh, we just take uh, this number right here the kinetic energy and then we just divide that by uh, the number on the right hand side. So divide that by 5,880 and uh, roughly I'm getting uh, 5.95 meters for this problem. Okay, so that is the maximum height that is reached by the combined weight of these two objects. So if I go back to my diagram now, okay, so the maximum height that we reach here is going to be uh, 5. 0.95 meters. That's the maximum height there. All right, so that's a very good question to kind of finish off this uh, video guide. It's another collision question where we need to combine the conservation of momentum principle as, uh, along with the work energy theorem as well.